a rock and roll legend will visit the Carrier Dome next September. How did SU bring him here? And former President Obama made his first public appearance since President Trump's inauguration. Find out what he said. And a star of The Bachelor finds himself on the wrong side of the law. Citrus TV News starts right now. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. Sir Paul McCartney is set to rock the Carrier Dome next fall. Hi everybody, I'm Nick Fathentonis. And I'm Jackie Prager. The Carrier Dome has announced that McCartney will hit the stage on September 23rd. The Beatles star is known for his big hits like Let It Be and Yesterday. This isn't the first time McCartney has played in upstate New York. He has performed in Albany and Buffalo in recent years. Carrier Dome Managing Director Pete Sala says he's excited to bring this event to the Dome. Well, it's exciting, of course. I mean, you know, this is uh, one of those performers that we've, we've been working very, very hard for many years to, um, to bring to, this, to the city, to the university, to the campus. Um, you know, to me, it's an honor. Tickets for the show will go on sale Monday. Sala said there'll be no special ticket prices for students. The Whitman School of Management has two final candidates in their search for a new dean. Dr. Gene Anderson currently serves as the Shine Family Chair in Business at the University of Miami after previously teaching at the University of Michigan. Dr. Ajeev Dewan is a business professor and a computers information systems professor at the University of Rochester. Both candidates are holding open forums to Whitman students this week. Governor Cuomo has granted more than $53 million to transform the Greater Rochester International Airport. The money will go towards redesigning the terminal building, new signage, and more security measures. The plan is part of Governor Cuomo's plan to improve transportation infrastructure in the state. The governor also appointed new members to his administration. He even added a team who are committed to implementing his current agenda. New members include the former deputy chief of staff for Governor Chris Christie and the former senior counselor to the Secretary of Homeland Security. Maria Camella and Roger Perino are respectively the new chief of staff and commissioner of Homeland Security. The new director of Women's Affairs is also an SU alum. New details tonight on the Student Association election this past uh, this year. Vote totals from last week's essay election have been released. Winners James Franco and Angie Patty received 2,155 votes, while Tyler Rossi and Roy Tin received 189 votes. The Student Association met last night for the second to last time this semester. Assembly members voted on which actions that began this year would become permanent. Among the actions are the 24-hour library hours during exam weeks, as well as the mental hygiene program. Elections for liaison to the school board of trustees and alumni board also took place. Next week, assembly members will vote in a new parliamentarian and speaker of the assembly. Community members honored sexual assault survivors last night. They gathered for a candlelight vigil. It happened from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. in honor of Sexual Assault Awareness Month. It served to raise awareness for the fight to end violence against women across the world. Tiffany Breck of the Vera House led it. She said campus is continuing to find ways to spread awareness of the fight against sexual assault. If you're currently experiencing some kind of violence, uh, know that there are people and resources that exist there for you, either on a college campus or within the community. Um, and for people who don't have a lot of knowledge about these things, you know, do a search. Go to the you know, Office of Health Promotions uh, here at SU campus. The Newhouse School was one of four schools nationwide to host a new program to train journalists in the use of drones. Citrus TV News reporter Jenna Babiak tells us about the event. The day is here that journalists all over the country can have their own flying robot to report news. This weekend, the Newhouse School participated in a groundbreaking training initiative on drone journalism. The program was developed by the Pointer Institute and included hands-on workshops on safe drone operations. The three-day workshop focused on legal and ethical issues, practices in a breaking news environment, and ways drone journalism can be used in new storytelling. Students right now can differentiate themselves in the marketplace when they go to get jobs. If they are already drone certified, then that's not something their employer has to do. They can say, this is a skill that I have that other people don't. Additional online training will be available later this year on Pointer's e-learning platform, News University. 
Jenna Babiak, Citrus TV News. Well, Nick, today was a kind of odd day with the rain and a little bit of scattered showers. Did you get caught in the, some of those surprise sun showers? Yeah, but I did manage to pack a rain jacket for the first time this semester. But the question is, will it stick around? And Gilat Malaba joins us in studio to tell us about that. Yeah, guys, it was a very on and off type of day. Right now, local conditions in the area, you do have some sun. You also have some clouds. And there you see that scattered rain moving in and out of Syracuse. Currently, right now, we just have clouds 62 degrees. We had a high today of 64, so slightly above average for April temperatures. How has April stacked up, though, to years past? I'll tell you coming up in my full Citrus TV forecast. And coming up, former President Obama reappeared in public for the first time since President Trump's inauguration. We'll have more on what he said. And Ivanka Trump joined women from across the world at the W20, W20 Summit in Berlin. Citrus TV News will be right back. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. It's a beautiful day out here, sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. I spy something beginning with S. Snow? No. Snow-covered trees? Nothing to do with snow. Head outside to discover incredible animals <laughs> and beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. Wow. So grab your loved ones. Don't even. And explore a world of possibilities. Come on, this way. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you. Here we go. We're gonna go out there in the rain. We're gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, look at the rain. Oh, look at the rain. Okay, quick. Oh, yeah, yes. So much fun. Yeah, Dad. We're getting so wet. You're watching Citrus TV News with Jackie Prager, Nick Papantonis, and Gilat Molamed with weather. Citrus TV News continues now. This just in, a California judge blocks an executive order that withholds funds from sanctuary cities. The ruling says President Trump's order, which targets sources of funding, are too broad. Mayor Minor declared Syracuse a sanctuary city earlier this year. It is currently unclear how the order will affect Syracuse. And President Trump might want to wait until the fall to secure, secure federal funding for his border wall. This means politicians on both sides of the aisle could have an easier time avoiding a federal government shutdown this weekend. Trump tro told journalists at the White House today that he would put off the plan until September. The delayed move would remove the largest part of the bill, including the federal government's September funding. Dozens of teams swarmed onto a train in Oakland, California, and robbed passengers on board. The crime took place over the weekend when 40 to 60 juveniles ran onto a Dublin-bound train and grabbed bags and cell phones from passengers. The group stole a total of five cell phones, a duffel bag, and a purse. Officials are still checking security cameras that are installed on parts of the train for more information. And former President Barack Obama has made his first public appearance since leaving office. Obama spoke in an event in his own hometown of Chicago. Obama talked about his time in politics and the future he sees for young Americans. This marks the end of a three-month hiatus since leaving office on January 20th. Over the past months, he's spent time on vacation in California and on a Caribbean island. There's a reason why I'm always optimistic, even when things uh, look like they're sometimes not going the way I want. 
and that is because of young people like this. The younger Trump also making headlines today. Ivanka Trump is making her very first international trip since her father became president. German Chancellor Angela Merkel invited her to Berlin to join a panel. Trump discussed female entrepreneurship and feminism at the W20 summit. She also spent time discussing the need to empower women. You passed unequal pay legislation to promote transparency and to try to finally narrow um, that gender pay gap. And that's something we should all be looking at to see the efficacy of that policy as it gets rolled out. At least two dozen police officers have been killed in an attack in India. Officials believe that hundreds of Maoist rebels carried out the attack in central India. Police say 23 officers died at the scene of the attack. This is the second attack that that region has seen in the past two months. Maoist rebels have killed over 2,000 civilians since 2010. A U.S. submarine has officially arrived off the coast of South Korea. This comes at a time when North Korea is celebrating the 85th anniversary of its army. Allied nations conducted maritime exercises this morning. The USS Michigan's presence is meant to, sp to spread a message up to Pyongyang. This is the latest show of force set up by President Trump in response to North Korean nuclear testing. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. Current temperatures right now across the area, mostly low 60s, couple of places in the 50s, Binghamton and Rome and Cortland. Looking at tonight, the rain will come back around 10 p.m. You figure a lot of rain across the region. This is what the surface forecast is looking like, and that rain is going to continue into tomorrow morning when you wake up. Good news is it will stop around 10 a.m. Going to be around 52 degrees tomorrow, but low winds. Take a look at the forecast winds for tomorrow. Single digits across much of the northeast. And looking at the rest of tomorrow, 9 a.m. going to be 54 degrees, and it's going to get up to 69 degrees by 6 p.m. Temperatures are going to keep climbing as we head into our very hot Thursday. If you want to take the boat out on the lake this weekend, good conditions. Best time to go is going to be Saturday afternoon, 69 degrees and some sun. And looking at April, April is the month of showers, and it was a little above average this month. We had 4.75 inches of rainfall, about an inch above average, but nowhere near the record rainfall in 2011, almost double of what we had this month, if you can believe that. And looking ahead at our five-day forecast, tomorrow morning showers with a high of 70 degrees. Thursday, Friday, Saturday looking really good. You're going to get some sun in there, and then the rain's going to make another appearance on Sunday morning with a high of 65 degrees. Well, Gilad, today we saw a few of those April showers, but are we going to see those continue into May? Yeah, it is going to continue into May a little, looking at next week. Uh, we're going to start off the week with rain on Monday, and then uh, at the tail end of next week, it will come back. And I love seeing those three days of gorgeous sunshine. Oh, yes. What are conditions going to be like as Mayfest starts, though? Yeah, Mayfest, so the morning it will be a little cloudy, but you figure once you're heading out to Walnut Park, the sun will come back. You might have some issues at night if you're going to block party with some light evening rain, but uh, it should be a nice day overall. Great, right, good to hear it. Thanks thank so much. Thank you so much. Up next, Panera Bread is going through a hiring rise. Find out why. And a Bachelor star has fallen from glory. We'll be right back. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day, I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org.
visit aarp.org caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. If you see news happening on campus, in Syracuse, or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. Yahoo's CEO may not have that title for much longer, but she won't leave empty-handed. Marissa Mayer is projected to leave the company with $186 million when her over 4 million shares of stock are purchased by Verizon. Mayer has led the company for five years, but Verizon says she will not be part of the new management. In addition to the stock purchase, Mayer will receive a $3 million severance package. And in the other kind of dough news, Panera might make bread, but the company is going to need a lot more of that dough. The company has plans to hire 10,000 workers and double the number of restaurants that deliver to homes. Those new positions include drivers and in-store employees. Panera plans to raise the number of delivery locations by 25% by the end of the year. Researchers at Georgia Tech have found something interesting in the air. They were testing what chemicals are discharged into the air when you step on your brakes. Scientists found that particles in the air can break down in small amounts of earth metals that shoot off brake pads. They say when our bodies ingest these metals, they can lead to adverse health effects. Researchers say the best way to avoid this is by rolling up your windows. Samsung customers are saying their phones are looking a little bit off color. The company has received multiple complaints about the display of the new Galaxy S8. Customers say that the display is tinted red and they didn't know how to fix it. Samsung plans to roll out a software update to fix the issue. Former Bachelor star Chris Stoles is in legal trouble after a fatal, fatal car crash in Iowa yesterday. Stoles' vehicle struck a tractor trailer on a local road and killed the driver. The reality star fled the scene after the incident. He was arraigned today and his bond was set at $10,000. Stoles appeared on The Bachelor's 19th season in 2015. Coming up in sports, Syracuse Tennis already beat Louisville during the regular season. Now the two teams square off in the first round of the ACC tournament tomorrow. We have a preview of this and more when we come back. Come on, it's not that hard. My big man fingers are having a problem with these little tiny buttons. <laughs> Whoa, watch it there. Your blood pressure is going to go through the roof. Tell me about it. I'm trying to learn how to get it down. Instead, it keeps going up. High blood pressure can increase the risk for heart attack or stroke. Learn how to keep yours at a healthy range. Ever hear a voice command? Just say, text Barbershop to 97779. That's not what I said. Just give me that. Now my blood pressure's up. Oof. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. mm. <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. Every time I hear the alarm bell go off in school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. But I know it's all gonna be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my these words. These are not my words. These are not my words. Looking for these? You drive buzzed, it could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. Syracuse men's lacrosse has held on to the one spot for the third week in a row. Good evening, I'm Nicole Weaving. Desco's boys are preparing for the ACC tournament after their most recent win over Binghamton on Saturday. Let's hear from midfielder Nick Mariano about their progress in practice counting down to the tourney. 
Uh, I think there's a lot more energy uh, this week of practice. Uh, just in the past two days, you could just feel it. You could feel everyone, you know, is in a good mood and, and really, you know, putting in the extra effort that they need. Uh, we got a lot of guys, you know, shooting outside right now and, you know, doing the extra work, and that's what we need. You may have to wait until Friday for the men's lacrosse team to start their run in the ACC tournament, but the Syracuse tennis starts tomorrow afternoon. SU finished their regular season 8-13 and with the most recent loss to number 3 North Carolina. Tomorrow at 1 p.m., the women travel to Georgia for a date with Louisville in the first round of, of play. These conference foes met earlier this year with the Orange topping the, the Cardinals 5-2. Miranda Ramirez and Gabriella Knutson are leading the team in singles and as a doubles duo. The winner of this match will go on to play Wake Forest. Syracuse women's rowing is receiving high praise for the third time this season. The first Varsity 8 boat has been named ACC Crew of the Week for the second week in a row. This is the first time since 2014 a boat has earned this honor in consecutive weeks. Most recently, the crew came in fourth at the Clemson Invite, defeating three top 20 teams. The number 15 Orange will finish their regular season in New Jersey, taking on number 6 Princeton and number 12 Iowa on Saturday. Over in Hamilton, New York, Q Softball will play in a midweek doubleheader against Colgate tomorrow afternoon. This will be the final road test for the Orange in the regular season. Syracuse is 11-7 on the road and 6-1 and all time against Colgate, so the odds are in their favor. The ladies are coming off a split series with North Carolina after Game 3 was canceled. The Orange hope to regain momentum for their return home to Syracuse in a five-game homestand. In AAA baseball, the Syracuse Chiefs play the series opener against Durham in North Carolina tonight. This is the beginning of a six-game road stand for the Chiefs. After a slow start to the season, Syracuse has picked up steam and has now won their last six games. A win tonight would be crucial toward continuing this streak. On the other side, the Bulls most recently broke their winning streak with a loss to Louisville in the series closer. Continuing this baseball trend, the Miami Marlins are under new management. Derek Jeter and Jeb Bush have partnered up and won the auction to buy the team. The deal was sealed with G the Jeter-Bush group paying $1.3 billion to the Marlins. The previous owner, Jeffrey Loria, has owned the team since 2003, but in the light of his past consideration for U.S. Ambassador of France, he decided to step down. The turnover process will take a couple of months to complete. Derek Jeter's old team was supposed to take the field tonight, but that game has been postponed. The greatest rivalry in baseball, Yankees and Red Sox, was supposed to be underway tonight, but rain in the Boston area will push it to tomorrow. New York pitcher Louis Severino will face off against Boston's Rick Porcello on the mound tomorrow night. Over at Citi Field, it's just in that the Mets and Braves game has also been canceled due to rain. New York was hoping to break a four-game skid. The Metropolitans are hoping... Robert Selman will be enough to conquer the Braves pitcher Julio Tehran. Tehran has allowed only one run and ten hits in his three starts at Citi Field in the past two calendar years. Both teams return to Citi Field at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. And I want to talk about a different sport. It's some NASCAR going on. We had some big headlines. So do you mind explaining what's going on today? Yeah, so Dale Earnhardt has announced today that he will be retiring after the 2017 season. He has left such a great legacy. Started out in, in 1999, actually, behind his father's, in his father's footsteps, famous NASCAR racer Dale Earnhardt, Earnhardt Sr. Excuse me. And he has won now two Daytona 500s. He's won 23 races in his career. And most recently, he was concussed and sidelined during the 2016 season and has now become a huge voice for rehabilitation of sports-related brain injuries. So his legacy will not just be his father's, but his own as well. All right, That's thank great. you very much, Nicole. Thanks. We'll be right back. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes, <laughs> B, console her, don't worry, sweetie, this is gonna happen a lot, or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same.
I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Let's crawl. Let's crawl. Hey, yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Buggy lot, so what should we be wearing tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow's gonna be a little nicer to, than today, pretty mild, so um, you might not even need a jacket. I think if you go outside, t-shirt, sweatshirt, uh, you should be fine, especially later on in the day. Great, looking forward to it. Thank Thanks you very so much. much. Coming up next on OTN is Orange Press Pass, followed by two episodes of Talking Points. And you can find the full OTN schedule and all Citrus TV content on our website, citrustv.com. Well, we might not appreciate the cold Syracuse weather. One bird certainly does. Today is National Penguin Day, and while these flightless birds are popular all over the world, they are also in danger. Oh, look at that cute one up there. The two <laughs> of the most common penguin waddles are in decline, and a new report says climate change might be to blame. Scientists say that penguins may be one of the biggest indicators of climate change, even though, oh, so cute. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, I, I mean, look at them. How can we ever want to get rid of them? Or we don't want to get rid of them. How can I, we ever see a life without they them? They have a whole penguin exhibit set up in the Georgia Aquarium, and it is the cutest thing to see them just slide down. And, you know, I, Happy Feet, one of my favorite movies, I have to say. Yeah, it was a pretty good series. I, I saw it as a kid. And, uh, yeah, those penguins have some very happy feet right there. But these last two minutes are the final two minutes we have here at Syracuse University. Unfortunately, it is. It's really surreal to, to be even think that this is our last show of four years. I know we both started on air as freshmen doing different segments, and it's crazy to think that four years have just flown by. What was your favorite memory? I have to say, I covered a lot of big things here, but the speech that Oprah gave to dedicate the new, new house building, I was there for that. I still have the footage from it, actually. I kept it for myself, and uh, it was a really cool moment. A lot of great advice given in that speech. How about you? Um, I think just, you know, honestly, getting to know everyone and doing the different experiences between all the various shows throughout Citrus and between you know, Juice and Java and the news here and just covering different events, I can't pick out a specific one, but all the different just people that I've met, alumni and younger students as I've gone through my years, it has really just been a pleasure to work here and it's just been so much fun. I, I have to say there's been a lot of times though where I've had to go over port out in the snow, not appreciated as much. No, but the footage is always funny. I remember reporting out by the dome in a blizzard and it it was brutal at the time, but the footage was hilarious. And, you know, you can't be in Syracuse and not cover snow. You just yeah. can't. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there's been a lot of times where I, you know, I could just like, well, why didn't I go to Miami? Like, I had the I had the offer there, and I said, oh, no, I'm going to go to Syracuse. It won't because be we that wanted bad. you here, and it wouldn't be any, the experience wouldn't be the same. Yeah. You know what? We're both leaving this place in good hands. We are, you know, we've got a lot of young talent that's going to be coming through, and I can't wait to see what everyone I'm excited does. to see, and I wish everyone the best. Yes. <laughs> that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us for the final time. For our news 24-7, follow us on Twitter and follow at CitrusTV.com. I'm Jackie Prager. And I'm Nick Papantonis. Have a great night, Syracuse.